Welcome back to JV Foodie Cooks. Today we are looking at banana bread for our National Banana Bread Day. Let's get this show on the road. First up is America's Test Kitchen, the best banana bread. I guess we're about to find out whether it really is the best or not, but here we go. First thing you're going to do is turn on your oven, of course. You're going to turn it on 350 degrees, and then you are going to also make sure that you have a bread loaf pan, parchment paper, and some sort of cooking spray or olive oil, whatever floats your boat. From here, you are then going to get your dry ingredients all prepared. You are going to need two cups or 283 grams of unbleached all-purpose flour, three quarters of a cup or 149 grams grams of granulated sugar, three-fourths a teaspoon or 4.2 grams of baking soda, half teaspoon or three grams of table salt, and then I see this as optional since I didn't do this, but one and one-fourths cup of toasted walnuts chopped coarse. I personally do not like nuts in my bread, so I skipped that last ingredient of walnuts, but if you like that, go ahead and feel free to add them. Get all of these into a bowl, give them a good stir, and then set them aside until we're ready for them again. Now let's talk about our wet ingredients. You need to start with three very ripe bananas. Think the bananas that you think are going bad. They're speckled, brown, starting to get soft. Those are what you want for banana bread. Three large ones, if you can manage to get your hands on them. From here, you need to mash them up as good as you can. I thought I could do this with just a fork and I would be just fine, but I quickly realized that I would rather just get this done and over with and enlisted the help of a potato masher. Honestly, I would recommend just going for the potato masher, but if you don't own one or you prefer to do it with a fork, whatever gets the job done as long as it's mashed and pulverized and ready to go. Once you have your soupy, mushed up banana mixture, you you are then going to add the rest of your wet ingredients, which is going to be a fourth a cup or about 56 grams of plain yogurt. I actually used sour cream for this. It tasted delicious. If you're somebody who doesn't like sour cream, I promise you, you cannot taste that sour cream is in here, okay? I promise, just try it and you might surprise yourself. Two large eggs, lightly beaten, six tablespoons or about 85 grams of unsalted butter that has been melted and cooled down to room temperature, and then one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Sorry for those of you who like the weight. I don't even properly measure vanilla as it is. I just always use the cap full, so I don't have that for you, my bad. Give your wet ingredients a good stir, make sure they're all mixed and mingled and all together, and then get ready to bring back your dry ingredients. You then take your wet ingredients and you lightly fold them into your dry ingredients using a rubber spatula until just combined and the batter looks thick and chunky. I did that, but this is not my favorite method for this. I don't love adding the banana mixture to the dry ingredients because that tends to lead to big pockets of flour if you're trying to be really gentle with your folding and you're trying to be light and it just doesn't get mixed up enough, which is what happened to me. I was trying to be gentle with my folding. You don't want to over mix banana bread, so I was trying not to, but I just kept running into these huge pockets of flour. So I would actually recommend swapping it. I would actually add the dry ingredients to your banana mixture, but live and learn. Now that everyone is nice and mixed, and mingled and cohesive. We're going to take this batter and get it into our prepared bread loaf pan. I pre-prepared my loaf pan before I started and so that's just off to the side and ready to go. And then you're just going to take your batter and add it to the loaf pan. Or if you're like me, maybe you won't because you have butter fingers and can't manage to hold onto the bowl to get the batter into the pan. After a couple tries, I did eventually get it in there. I promise I did end up making banana bread and no bowls were harmed in the making of this. One thing you may notice missing from this recipe is a warm spice like cinnamon or nutmeg. So because I associate a warm spice with banana bread, I actually took some of this cinnamon sugar Cajun seasoning that I had and sprinkled it on the top to give it just a little bit of a warm spice and a little bit of a crunchy sugar exterior on the top. Totally optional though, just like the walnuts. From here, this is now going to find its way into your 350 degree preheated oven for about 55 minutes. I say about because you should check it at the 45 minute mark and see if it's done then or if you do need to keep it in for longer. Once your banana bread is looking golden brown and you can insert a toothpick and have it come out clean, your banana bread is ready to be pulled from the oven. Let it sit for about five minutes at least before you pull it out of the loaf pan to cool on a wire rack. You can serve this warm or at room temperature. We ended up letting this cool completely overnight covered by a cloth cloth and enjoyed it with coffee the next morning. Don't mind the tiny little feet. We have a toddler and she approved of this banana bread as well. Even though I felt like I over mixed the batter, it came out a really beautiful banana bread. It tasted really good. The texture was still really good. It wasn't super overworked. I think that's just more of me criticizing myself, but this was a delicious banana bread that I actually ended up using this recipe to make banana muffins. Did you think we were going to stop with just one type of banana bread? No. We're going to make a vegan type so we can be inclusive around here so people that can't eat eggs or don't eat eggs or milk or any sort of dairy for that fact can enjoy a nice slice of banana bread as well. This recipe that we're using to make vegan banana bread is coming from Ambitious Kitchen, who does amazing stuff. Her food is always delicious, so I knew when I decided I wanted to do a vegan banana bread, it was going to have to be hers. 
her banana bread starts off with the wet ingredients. You are going to need three medium to large ripe bananas, about one and a half cups mashed all together, one third a cup of melted and cooled coconut oil, which is about 80 grams. I actually use the same amount of cultured vegan butter and it turned out great. A half a cup or 105 grams of packed brown sugar, half tablespoon of vanilla extract. We know how I feel about measuring that out. And then two tablespoons of dairy-free milk of choice, which is around 30 milliliters. I happen to use oat milk. You're going to mash up your bananas if they haven't been mashed already and add all the rest of your wet ingredients into it and get them all commingled and homogenous and ready to go. Let's talk about our dry ingredients now. You are going to need one and three fourths a cup or about 210 grams of all purpose flour, one teaspoon or about six grams of baking soda, one teaspoon or 2.5 grams of ground cinnamon, and then half teaspoon or about three grams of salt. All of your dry ingredients are going to end up in the same bowl and whisk together until we need them here in a minute. Now this recipe does what I like to do. You are now going to add your dry ingredients to the wet ingredients and mix until just combined. Unlike the previous one where we were adding the wet to the dry, this one, Ambitious Kitchen, does it the right way, or at least what I think is the right way. Just a reminder, try not to over mix your banana bread. You want it until it is nice and mixed, but there can still be some clumps of banana, some clumps of flour. It's going to be fine, I promise. Don't just stir it till the day's end. Here you have some optional added you can either add chocolate chips or walnuts, but we know how I feel about putting nuts in my banana bread. I am not a fan, so I did not choose to do that. However, chocolate chips, I'm down for. I ended up adding 100 grams, which is a little more than half a cup of dairy-free chocolate chips to my banana bread batter. Delicious. From here, just like the last recipe, this is going to go into your loaf pan. So I had mine prepared already before I got started. It's lined with parchment and some olive oil, and I'm just going to get this batter into the loaf pan and ready to get going into the oven. This banana bread is going into a 350 degree oven for anywhere from 40 to 50 minutes or until golden brown and a tester inserted into the middle comes out clean. So just like the previous one, if it looks golden, your tester comes out clean or just with a few crumbs, it's good and ready to be pulled. Once you have pulled your banana bread from your oven, you're going to leave it in the loaf pan for anywhere from five to 10 minutes just to let it cool down a little. After that five to 10 minutes, you are going to take it out of the pan. This is why I like using parchment paper. I can just lift it up and out and I'm going to let it completely cool down to room temperature on a wire rack. Just like last time, we let this cool overnight and enjoyed it in the morning with a cup of coffee. The chocolate chips get all melty when you dip a slice into your hot coffee. The coffee just soaks into the banana bread and it's just delicious. For a vegan banana bread, you would never know this was vegan. My mother, who doesn't normally like vegan food, she says the texture is different and weird, loved this banana bread. So I would highly recommend you give this a try and then go give Ambitious Kitchen some love because she really deserves it. This is her recipe and yeah, see what else she's got going on.